Thomas, we're back, my friend. Tasty Bites. Uh, <clears throat> let me get to my Tasty Bites. It's, ah. it's the one that's uh, seven pages. I got it, sir. I'm getting there. We 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 kill a. Tr- I feel I don't want to say we kill a tree every day, but it please feels don't like, say that. No, I know. Come but on. It, it feels like we create a. You know, I, considering I live in a paperless world, it feels like we. Um, have too by much the way, paper? I haven't made a trade yet today. That's correct. You have not. I have not made a trade. I just yet turned today. on my Bob. I was like, uh, I want to make sure I. You know, huh? I know I send the trades to, but I just want to make sure my Bob was working. Your Bob was working. I want to make sure. My- <laughs> <laughs> Don't even go there. <laughs> Your Bob needs a pill. <laughs> Don't even go there. Your Bob needs therapy and a pill. Then we may get your Bob working. Until then. Um, and a good pep talk. And a good pep talk. <laughs> we got to bring your Bob in off the ledge. <laughs> Any nice. What? Any nice. No. I took pictures for you. Don't worry. Did you? Yeah. Thanks. Appreciate it. Okay. Tony, you, Tony, you. At one point was, um, uh, you know, at one point, you know. You, one point I had game. Yeah, you had game. Mm. You are. Um, it has been. It's actually really funny because I talk, people ask me all the time, they go, what's it like working with a bat every day? I go, it's not the same bat. Like, I'll say, like, it's, it's not. like working with his grandfather. Yeah, it's not like, it's not like the bat you're thinking of, okay? Mm-hmm. You know, this is the new bat. It's, yeah. It's, 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 it's not the same thing. Get you all fooled. Huh? Got you all fooled. You got nobody fooled. <laughs> yeah, I've seen your act, okay? You got nobody fooled. Hey, Beth is still out there? Beth is there, sure. Oh, I didn't know that. And it was a two-day event for, for us. Beth will be there all day today. In she, Vegas. She doesn't have a flight until tonight. She'll be there all day. Awesome. Go bug the crap out of her. Please. And you got lots of free stuff out there. She's giving away stuff. She's got thousands of stickers and shirts and hats, and and um, it's awesome stuff. Cool. Very good. Yeah. Please visit her. Um, tchotchkes. I like it. Okay. Yeah, shmati. Um, huh? Yeah, shmati. A shmati. I'm a shmati salesman. You're a shmati salesman. Yeah. You ready? Yep. We are going to do a topic today called Theta Decay because we have so many new listeners. In case you didn't read this at the Las Vegas McCarran Airport, which is our favorite airport in the free world, just so you know that. Mm-hmm. Um, they are, it actually is my favorite airport in the whole world, not because it's the coolest airport, but because they support believe they are huge fans of the show the the actual the the team that runs mccarran airport in las vegas they couldn't be any nicer to us and so we are huge fans they are the best run airport in america period so says the so off. says me who has how many years of flight school i have i didn't say flight air i'm just saying as far as airports go and as far as mu- municipalities and whatever runs it they are the best we've ever done business with awesome okay theta decay you ready, Bat? Dun, 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 dun. We have a lot of new listeners. And what I was trying to say is that if you go to the McCarran Airport, you'll see on the sign, we're the fastest growing financial network in the galaxy. Mm-hmm. And I guess we can't prove that, but we can prove that. It can't um, be disproved. We can't be disproved. <laughs> what we can prove is that um, whereas everybody else thinks that the financial media is losing business because people um, are just not watching because they're too smart, we know that's not true. The reason that the industry is losing business is because everybody's coming to watch tape. And we appreciate your business. And it's the same thing as when we started Thinkorswim. These firms used to go, where are all our good customers going? Mm-hmm. And we'd be like, and people would our say, our numbers are down. How come? Our numbers are down. They'd be like, people just aren't trading. And right. then we used to always laugh. Market's and, lower. People aren't interested in buying right now. <laughs> yeah. I'll tell you, uh, this is a true story. And so um, when we first started Thinkerson, there was a group that ran TD Ameritrade. It wasn't the, the group that's in charge now. This was Joe Moglia's team. They're, uh, obviously, they a lot of history, smart mm-hmm. guys, smart people. And um, at the time, they kept going, where are our customers going? And, you know, like, where's our, where are good customers going? Where are they going? Don't understand this. We're losing, you know, and, and you're like, they're going to this little firm we've never heard of before, <laughs> which was Thinkorswim. And um, they were all good, you know, and, and they were kind of, you know, the active option traders. And they used to be like, okay, I want you to build whatever they have. Correct. Okay, because there's no, you know, we can do anything. We have a hundred billion dollars. Mm-hmm. We can do everything. And and then they came back and said, um, well, we can do everything but build what they have. <laughs> so they go, well, then just go buy them. Correct. And that's when the process started, like five years earlier. And it took um, until the new administration came in and they said, listen, you guys can't build anything. Let's just buy them. And that's kind of how the whole thing went down. And I give them um, a lot of credit to the current 
management team there because they understood their limitations as well as their needs. And it was very rare. And also, I mean, they could build it. It would just cost too much. I mean, it was, it was more. It was very rare inside of the brokerage industry to do a deal that was not accretive. And again, you know, most firms take over other firms to make a creative deal. So the world's changing. You mean absorb now. them, take it in, That's and, right. and then just make it their own That's kind right. of thing, not leave it as not a standalone company, but they left the platform pretty much the as is. The world of deals was always about being accretive and then selling off the piece. You were trying to arb it. Right. The, the deal, the Carl icons of the world would arb their place. I'll buy this company for X and I'll sell off the pieces for X and I'll be long this piece for free. Correct. And that'll help my core business. Yeah, I did that twice. I bought a building in Chicago and I said it had one or two lots or this. I was a lot younger. I didn't know anything about investing. And I bought a building on two lots and I said, I'll just keep one, sell the other one, I'll own this for half price. Perfect. That didn't work. <laughs> then I bought this. Um, I was making a lot of money as a kid because we were just, you know, the markets were wide. Mm -hmm. We didn't really know anything. We were just in the right place at the right time. And... I got this one building on the on on there was a big space like apartments stores and and it was like a fire sale mm -hmm. and I bought it. I'm like here I'll just sell off this piece and I'll own the rest for free and this piece I'll live in the basement for free I'll sell off the two corners I'll own the whole thing I don't want to live there mm -hmm. I'll sell I'll own the whole middle piece for free that didn't work either <laughs> those are my attempts at um, what we would call real estate arbitrage and it was a disaster um, that said. But that if you was, held it for 40 years, you'd be in good shape now. That was the old world of takeovers and corporate raiders and all that kind of stuff. Then we went to a, in a world of accretion where you did a deal because, you know what, you could acquire customers cheaper than um, if you, you tried to them, acquire them. On, you right. could buy them cheaper than, buy, than acquiring right. them on your own. And then all of a sudden now over the last, you know, and a lot of it started with the TD – buyout of thinkorswim but in this industry and then other industries very similar like when facebook bought instagram and things mm -hmm. like that and all the deals google does hey you know what they're buying stuff that you're, you're buying you're buying ip correct it's pretty interesting and the firms that are left behind now are the firms that aren't buying ip right mm -hmm. so now they're playing catch up exactly theta decay a fundamental component of option pricing is the time remaining until expiration. We thought we'd get back to a little bit of basics here because we have so many new listeners and it's important. So a fundamental component of option pricing is the time remaining to expiration. The more time remaining, the higher the premium priced into an option. There is natural decay in the value of this time premium as the option nears expiration. We call this theta decay, time decay, Premium decay, all the same thing. Correct. Okay. Theta decay, premium decay, time decay. Six of one, half dozen of another. Correct. Short option positions profit with the passage of time as premium is collected, whereas long option positions lose that premium as the contract nears expiration, assuming the options stay out of the money. Long options, negative theta. Short options, positive theta. That does not mean, by the way, leave it at this slide for a second. That does not mean that just because you buy an option, you're going to lose, or just because you sell an option, you are going to win. Okay, this is why we right. get, this is how we have to set up this segment for Tasty Bites because we want you to be very conscious. If all you had to do was sell options and you win, everybody would make money. If all you could, if every time you bought options, you lost, then there'd be no business. Correct. The beautiful thing about the option space is not the fact that there is this relationship between long and short options and positive and negative decay. It's that the market is two-sided. I told this story last night, and I think it's really important to understand. There is people will – people – and I'm talking about like prominent – people in financial media will talk negative about the derivatives marketplace. They'll say, hey, you know what? This is, this doesn't, nobody who trades options, nobody who trades futures, nobody trades Forex, nobody that does anything with derivatives, nobody does, can make money. Correct. That's what because, they would say. Because, what do they say? Because the game is skewed against you. Right. Yet it's a tight liquid market. Yet, how is the game skewed against you if you could do the other side? So you're telling me that the game is so skewed against you. And you've been telling me this all along and, that and I should just do the opposite of what I want to do, right? Then then the only way it's not it, – it really isn't fair is if the other side didn't exist. So what does that mean? That means if you go to Vegas, where I was yesterday, and I want to – you wanted me to buy the Chicago Blackhawks to win the Stanley Cup. Correct. There's only a one-sided market at the sports book. Correct. That one-sided market means all I can do is buy the Blackhawks to win. 
But you can't sell the Blackhawks on the Stanley Cup. I cannot sell the Blackhawks not to win. Correct. So I can buy the Blackhawks to win, so I have to buy it at their price, which means that's not a fair market, but everybody trades it because that's all they've got. Right. This is very different. And they think it's fair. And they think it's fair. Mm -hmm. This is crazy different, but we write stories about this, and we have idiotic people in management roles, uh, either as editors or producers, or whatever you want to call it, mostly producers and editors, who don't understand that the opposite of doing something is doing the other side if there's a two-sided market. So in the financial space, if you think something's unfair, it's only unfair if you can't do the other side. Correct. If you want to do the other side, then it's fair. Remember yesterday, I, I did the, I, I joked about that piece of um, all that information from J.P. Morgan that I had mm -hmm. to sign. Yep, you ripped it up. They come and take away your firstborn? Yeah. So so Scott and I both made some trades in the past, to swap trades at J.P. Morgan <coughs> with respect to bonds. And the funny thing is the guy would say, what do you want to do? And we'd say, can we get a market? Right. I never told this part of the story. <laughs> we would say, and and, and, and and Scott and I were on the phone at the same time. Well, what do you want to do? Do you want to buy or do you want to sell? No, and he's like, well, you either have to buy it or sell. We're talking to their traders. Mm -hmm. Well, you're either going to buy it or sell it. We go, we... Trust me, we've made I'm millions of trades. We've made millions of trades. We understand. We're asking you for a market. All right. He's like, but why would you want a market on both sides? You're, you're either, only going to do one side. That's right. So you're either buying it or selling it. And we're like, listen, please don't make us say what I'm about to say. <laughs> we get that. We want a two-sided market because we don't want you to know what we're going to do. Right. So we want a two-sided market so, so we, we know that you're making a fair market for us and that we can trust the efficiency of the market you're making. Does that make sense? Answer that came back to us, and this is the God's honest truth. Nobody's ever asked us for a two-sided market before. Come on, seriously? I told you, God's honest truth. Nobody's ever asked us for a two-sided market before. I go, you're telling me that nobody's ever called your trade desk and asked for a two-sided market. They're like, yes, that's you're the first pierce person persons who have ever said, "What's the market? Two did you, sides." Did you get one? No. In fact, we were told that it would take between fifteen minutes and a half hour to receive a two sided market. So we could either buy, but, I, but if you want to buy or sell, I can get you filled in what about a minute, a minute or less. Yes, <laughs> a minute or less, but without knowing how the wide price. the markets are or what the right. two sided market of is. Not. Absolutely. They got to figure out that what is. Then they got to That's why when they there. lost a couple of billion dollars, I'm like, it's mathematically impossible for you guys to lose because you rip everybody off every time you make a trade. That's why you make comments like, hey, do you like your fill? <laughs> Listen, I'm sorry I strayed, but I had to get this out because it shows you where all this negative stuff comes from. Mm -hmm. So then I understand why nobody can make money trading against the counterparty when the counterparty doesn't have a fair market. But the purpose here is to explain. It doesn't matter, long, short, whatever it is, just understand how it works. If the market is efficient, if you trade the most liquid underlyings, it is incredibly, you know, it doesn't, if you think something's unfair, then do the other side. Right. Seems pretty simple, right? That's right. Then just do the other side. Amazing. Let's go to the next slide. We need to be aware of theta decay and set up trades to take advantage of its nature. We agree with that. That's kind of our, our whole thing is that <clears throat> over time, you create theta decay to reduce your cost basis, limit your profitability. Sometimes, sometimes you limit your profitability. The reason you limit profitability is to improve your probability of success. And that's how it works. In the reason you market. create theta decay is to improve your probability of success. The reason you want to improve your probability of success, and again, this is part of my whole discussion, and this is part of what I talked about last night. In a black and white world of investing, if everything normalizes, you have a 50-50 chance or a slightly better than 50-50 chance if you're buying something versus selling it because of the positive drift. But you essentially have a 50-50 chance. As soon as you improve your probability of success, your odds go from 50, a little over 50-50, to about 70-30. That's all it is. Correct. And for some reason, as a culture, we can't figure that out. And it's we look so at a portfolio simple. that has that type of probability of success. As a general guideline, we try to build a portfolio that on average creates 1% theta decay per day. That's, that's By the way, that is a crazy generalization that I just put together. It doesn't mean anything. I just like to throw out, I hate to be so vague, so I threw something out there. Correct. But that's reasonable. Um, which, by the way, go back for a slide for a second. 
just so that that makes sense as a general guideline, that is the low end of a general guideline, which which is trying to accommodate a very low volatility environment, which I think means that you should be on the low end right now. And that is based off net liquidating value, not buying power. Okay, so it's based off net liquidating value. Got when it. Tony says he has a $10,000 account or a $100,000 account, that is the net liquidating value of that particular account. When you're looking not at- how much buying power you That's using. right. When you're looking at how much money, he may have a $10,000 account and 1,000 or 2,000 of available buying power or a $100,000 account with 60,000 of available buying power. That number is based on net but liquidating value. you're looking value. for 1% on the net lick. Right, right. Got it. Okay. What this means is if we're starting with trading capital account, what this means is if we're trading with an account that has $2,500 in capital, we should be looking to collect roughly $25. No, that's correct. That's not correct. It's 20, mm -mm. <laughs> that this is not correct. So, so let me, I didn't have a chance to proof this because I was on the plane and Tony didn't do his job for me. Um, <laughs> but uh, no, that's not right. So what we're looking to do, Mr. Bat, <laughs> okay, is we're essentially looking for every, for every thousand, um, I'm sorry, for every thousand dollars in net liquidating value, looking we're looking at, to collect a dollar a day. So in this case, we'd be looking to collect about $2 and 50 cents. cents. Okay. Not $25. Right. So it's, oh, I'm sorry, the decimals are the wrong place. So it's about $2 and 50 cents. Correct. Update on the entire portfolio per day. Watch this through the powers. Ooh. Perfect. How do you do that? Linder. Very nice. Thanks um, Linda. You lunch. And that should put a little bit more context around that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Is there another slide? Yes. Okay. Go to the next slide. Three more. Okay. Some trades to consider to take advantage of theta decay in a single month are out-of-the-money credit spreads and iron condors. Now, please hear me out here. We are at a low end of implied volatility. In fact, one of the things that I did last night, and I will pull this up for you while we're talking on this subject, Bat is I went through a variety of stocks. And the reason I did that was to show you where we are implied volatility wise. Google, we are in the fifth percentile. This is how cheap implied volatility is right now on a relative basis, which is why out of the money credit spreads and iron condors are very difficult to do. But if you wanna talk about it, Google, 5%. 5th percentile or 6th percentile, mm -hmm. Yahoo, 7th percentile, Citigroup, 4th percentile, Starbucks, one, one, one out of 100. 99% of the time, it's higher than that. Okay. That's really what that number is, right? SPX, the 52 weeks. SPX, 9%. Netflix, under 9%. Goldman Sachs, just over zero. Look at that Starbucks. Well, now it's two. They've changed mm -hmm. the numbers a little bit. But sure. Goldman Sachs, now on the opposite end, and one of the reasons we put positions on like naked short puts in FXY is it's trading in the 80th percentile. One of the reasons we trade Tesla is it's trading in the 96th percentile, Tony. So when you're looking for things to do, you're doing it based on where the opportunity is. Tesla's in the 96th percentile. So the fact that Tesla is... That just means that there's going to be more premium to sell, which means that your theta decay is going to be higher. We have to make smart decisions. All right. You may love a certain thing, but if you can't get it because the price, listen, let's say what's something, um, let's say you, you found your favorite, what ice cream. I don't know what it is. Sure. Okay. So Tony likes, he loves goat's milk ice cream. It's his favorite with a little pistachio. There's is only that, one place. Is that, a, is that a play on this Pomoni? Yeah. Kind of <laughs> somewhat. With, there's only one place that sells it in Chicago, but all of a sudden, so there's a huge line. So in order to get this goat's milk pistachio ice cream, you're going to have to pay five times what you would normally pay. Okay. To avoid having to wait in a two-hour line. Sure. So at that point, you think to yourself, is it worth it to spend $25 on an ice cream cone? Mm -hmm. Or should I just pass and do something else? Even though I know it's a great ice cream cone. Mm -hmm. And you're probably going to pass. So when out-of-the-money credit spreads, when you're trading in the one, the one percentile, not the hundred, but the one, it makes no sense to sell an out-of-the-money credit spread in Starbucks, even if it's a directional play, even if it's whatever. Right. It makes no sense to do an iron condor in Goldman Sachs at the one percentile. But if you're like that strategy and you're looking for somewhere to go, you'll go to something like FXY. You'll go to something like Tesla at 97%. Hey, nobody cares about Tesla. Let's be fair. I mean, right. listen, you don't drive a Tesla. You don't care, right? Do no. You? Mm -mm. But if you, if I told you it's the 97 percentile, all of a sudden you care. 
Correct. It's a vehicle to trade. Hey, it's number one on our hit parade today for looking at for good trade, bad trade. Because it's the only thing I can find. It's in the high 90s. Correct. So it's maybe it's worth a look for a small trade. Let's go next slide. Some multiple month strategies to consider that benefit from the passage of time are calendars, diagonal spreads, and directional diagonal spreads. In fact, these are spreads that benefit from low volatility and the passage of time. It's a combo combo. Mm -hmm. It's like sausage and beef. Correct. Benefits from the passage of time. Mm -hmm. Let's go to the last slide. On the most basic level, if you're paying theta, your probability of success in your overall portfolio, and this is on the most basic level, is less than 50-50. Because what you're doing if you're buying theta is you're exposing yourself to open-ended upside, unlimited profitability. On the other hand, on the other hand, if your portfolio is collecting decay, the odds of success are much better than 50-50. But the only way that this pays off in the end <coughs> is if you're able to develop a system of managing winners. Because essentially, and I'm going to explain a lot more of this as time goes on, essentially you're building a set, a methodology and a set of mechanics around what we call probability of a touch rather than probability of expiring. Because in the end, probability of expiring is going to produce the results that are closer to a zero-sum game. Probability of a touch will give you an understanding of how to manage winners. But in the end, again, the the... The thing, that the takeaway from this is large account, small account, defined risk or undefined risk, depending how much capital you have, the objective here is to build an overall portfolio where the probability of success exceeds 50-50. That's it. We're good. 1% should be like 0 0.01. That's the – Okay. That's the mistake. I got it. Mm -hmm. Let's take a short break. We've been firing off a lot of information before I fall asleep, but I'm not going to. Don't you dare. We'll be no, back I'm in 90 good. seconds just to get tasted on it.